I would like to thank all of you for being with us. And then we'll start the discussion after a short welcome speech. If we are ready, we can screen the welcome speech by the mayor of Florence. And then after the video, I will ask Stefano Corsi to tell something, being the art director of the Fondazione Teatro della Toscana. This has been promoted in strict cooperation with the Teatro della Villa. Michael Che has been with us. And the first row, I see some incredible actors of this troupe, La Grande Troupe de l'Imaginaire. What, what does this mean? We'll tell you later on. If we're ready with the mayor's speech, let's go. I'm very happy to welcome all of you, so directors of 12 different European theaters gathering in Florence today for previous commitments with the uh, mayors of your cities, I regret not joining you today, but I want to deliver my message of total support and cooperation. So as the project of the Cultural Network for Europe will start quickly and stronger and stronger, I thank first of all the director Marco Giorgetti of the National Theatre and the Theatre of Tuscany, La Pergola, and I thank my friend Emmanuel de Merci Mota, thanks to whom this, the project has been started, the Charter uh, 1821, talking about Europe, the main values uh, of our continent, of our peoples. We have to build up a real alliance between cities and cultural institutions, uh, an alliance being, being, being given more value, focusing on the real needs to meet. Without culture, without cities, we cannot promise any future to the European peoples for the economy, for welfare, for foreign policy. <clears throat> culture is the main value, transverse's value of this new project, looking at the Europe of the future. I do wish that in the conference for the future of the EU, these points will be regarded as bullet points. But your work, the work you do with your uh, uh, work associate intellectuals, uh, artists. That's a key work. That's a work which is, which is, which is difficult to substitute because Pollux uh, needs a vision. For vision, we need a great cultural thrust and intellectual thrust. That's why today's meeting is an important meeting, and after this meeting, many others will follow. First and foremost, it's needed to strengthen cooperation between different theaters to core productions, but above all, through far-reaching projects like the one we're talking of today. Thank you again. Welcome once again to Florence, and a good work to all of you. Allora, piccola considerazione or so, a just a keep housing note, so headsets. So, interpretation service is going to be available from English into Italian and from Italian to English. You can pick up headsets. I don't know. I don't know. So if you need the headset, headsets are pretty available. I'm telling this to my guests. Stefano Corsi now. You have the floor. Good morning, anyone. Just uh, some little welcome speech. Good morning to all of you. So it's very important, very beautiful to start again after these two years, this way, in this place, with the support of different uh, cultural realities, but also administrative, as we have seen already, starting from the mayor of Florence being our host and supporting this important initiative. With Marco Giorgetti, we've been working for some time now, and Marco's work, never-ending work, before my arrival, I had the chance to meet him. So his work is an incredible work that's fundamental, that's key, above all today. 
because so these works makes a lot of connections possible. When we speak of Europe, the connection with Paris, that's key. The same happening in Italy, the same happening elsewhere in Florence and in Tuscany all around, from the biggest to the nearest one, theaters. And I believe that's important, really. If it was so some time before, opening up to the world, I mean, meeting people, I mean, comparing different cultural diversities, even far away, one from the other, maybe coming from other, from other countries. But these points are key, are key, I mean, for something which is a cultural exchange, but also for the essence of the theater. The theater is opening, so nothing else. Any time, at any time we have seen cultural realities, I mean, uh, I mean being closed, Afterwards, we've seen huge difficulties. Today, instead, even even more open up again to the world with this cultural exchange, with these dialogues. I think that's key. And also starting from the youth, because the Charter 1821 is an essential document that has been continuously, I mean, uh, revisited even during the pandemic outbreak. I believe that we can start this meeting we, with some hopes, uh, let's have more and more synergies ahead. Thus giving chance to the theater to move all around in Europe, in the world also. So thank you again. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Mark, once again, because Marco Giorgetti, as you know, as the mayor said, Marco's uh, work and his staff's work is really key it's really precious. Thank you a lot. And thank you, uh, Emmanuel de Merci Mota, sir, who is going to join us online. Emmanuel de Merci Mota has been one of the initial elements of this long journey. Thank you all. Thank you, Stefana. Thank you, Stefana. Because you wanted to be with us, Stefana. Thank you for being with us for the arts and for the organization as well. So thank you so much, Stefan Accorsi. Before passing the floor to my colleagues, I would like to say that this day is not a formal day. Absolutely, that's informal day, even though it's taking place in this uh, uh, fantastic institutional location. But that's, uh, that's uh, a confrontation. That's the occasion of having a, a new relationship, a starting point from which to start again for all our theaters in Europe. The point is having a new theater of the 21st century, widening also to other targets in a way we will try to understand all together. Many acknowledgments, many thanks for this day. We have to thank the mayor and then the Italian representative of the European Commission, the governor of the Tuscany region, the, uh, the uh, uh, president of the Fondazione Cassa, our members, all those who made this event possible, be it mentioned in our folders, in our files. Special thanks, warm thanks, uh, on behalf of Emmanuel de Merci Mota, that's a great opportunity not taken for granted. This required huge investments. Now we have the highest representative, Giorgio Muratori, of the ministry being with us. And I'm very, 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 very uh, thankful uh, for this. We have the director of the National Academy of Drama, of, of Drama Francesco Manetti, and Paolo Danati and Giacomo Giuntini of Teatro Due from Parma being in the audience. And then they will take the floor and they will say a few words if they want to, according to this meeting. So two special acknowledgments now to Elisabetta Di Mambro, who started this relationship a few days, a few years ago between Florence and Paris a few years ago. And also, thanks to these, we've been capable of starting a new mechanism, which is the one 
making us achieve brilliant results. I had a special acknowledgments personally to Maurizio Scafarro, who has been the beginner many years ago, of a new, a new approach, a new path. He didn't believe in Europe and he changed view to find out new ways in these important mechanisms. I stop here because time is quite short and we need time to gather your, your, your views, your opinions and your stimulus. But Stefan already paved the way to one of the major topics of this day. Probably it's, it's not possible to build up a, a future Europe without culture. So Europe goes along with culture. The same applies to the theater. We need some referrals. In 2018, we found the special uh, uh, milestone to the Charter, 1821, the Theater uh, de la Ville uh, wrote down. This is a sort of manifesto, so a declaration, a memorandum, so making the youth speak up, dedicated to those of age, uh, the coming of age of these people. So having topics being constantly updated, changing with, with art, science, education, environment, today health, uh, so uh, gender equality. So that's a sort of declaration, statement, you will find in the files, in the folders. But that's the very beginning of this journey. And from now onwards, we want to talk about this with all. And also those who are going to join our little group, uh, big group now. We will try now to use this, this manifesto as the real start on which funding an agreement. We can't do anything without a charter, without a map. That's a map to reconsider all together jointly, but to update according to our needs. This charter speaks of something. One topic I want to evoke in today's discussion, very, very strong, the one of the actor this has been found in Teatro della Ville in Florence. We say personaggi in cerca d'autore, a special play. We found incredible actors, performers who could just, uh, I mean, act Pirandello's story, our Pirandello stories, in a way, incredible way. So we found out additional, I mean, features of, of Pirandello's writings, French actors uh, acting in French, but, but playing an Italian uh, writer. So the performer is the messenger of this new culture. We want to spread, we want to confirm this new time of uh, relaunching our big, strong Europe, the actor in his, her language, in, in, in performing, so, so, and so representing this huge network in Europe. Other stimulus, uh, which can be also discussed by you, is also that we found out that probably working in a bilateral way is more, uh, I mean, uh, is more important than making up uh, huge networks of a lot of people. Paula experience is going to be very interesting. So we found out that probably to, uh, to set up relationship face to face, vis a vis, is a winning element. So Florence, Paris, Paris, and Lisbon. This means that France can also be connected with Lisbon as well. Who knows? And so and so forth. That's building up sign triangles more effective in a way. That's another point we want to stress once again with Emmanuel de Merti Mota as uh, of the schemes of our habits, also trying of thinking in a different way. Try and fly high. Always uh, considering the themes and the methods we want to, to use. Today we start a new path. After the development, we uh, let out to the levy. So this uh, will be followed by other days. So I'm sorry if we don't have the chance to make all colleagues speak up in Tuscany, joining us. We make an apology. So maybe these Tuscan colleagues will speak in other days. We want to organize. But with Emmanuel, we said, there's a prospect, there's a way to go. European days to build up in other locations 
to take the same way all together jointly. I stop here, but to say that the topics uh, we're going to deal with will be immediately transposed in Europe by the Amin European representatives in the next coming panel. And I believe this can be very interesting and, and really beneficial. I see Emanuela. We will speak just five minutes each, not longer than five minutes each, because we don't have so, uh, so much time for the next coming panel. So each speaker has five minutes to speak. If I forgot to thank someone, I make an apology. Emmanuel, you're ready to go. Oui, bonjour. Je n'ai pas d'image pour le. Je t'entends. Oui, et mais je te donne la, la, la parole si tu veux, Emmanuel. Si tu veux parler, c'est à toi. Okay. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Marco. Merci, merci beaucoup pour... Euh, D'abord, je voudrais euh, remercier le Théâtre de la Pergola, te remercier, Marco, euh, remercier Stefano, parce que j'ai entendu aussi ce qu'il a dit en introduction. Et cette relation avec vous, euh, je voudrais d'abord témoigner, commencer par témoigner d'une chose, c'est justement par rapport à ce que tu as dit, ces relations bilatérales. Ces relations, elles existent parce qu'il y a des relations d'amitié profondes et l'amitié est quelque chose sur lequel nous pensons toujours pouvoir travailler et fait partie de nos valeurs. Une amitié qui correspond à l'idée du partage et d'une ouverture pour justement renouveler les bases de notre coopération dans des domaines qui sont prioritaires pour nous, en particulier ceux aussi de la jeunesse, de la jeunesse européenne de ce 21e siècle. Dans tous les échanges que nous avons depuis trois ans, je voudrais rappeler que nous travaillons depuis de nombreuses années à une relation de dialogue autour des grandes thématiques de notre société et en particulier des grandes questions européennes. Aujourd'hui, face à une Europe qui est frappée par la guerre, un risque extrêmement élevé, une situation que personne n'avait pu imaginer, d'un pays l'Ukraine qui se retrouve envahi, qui se retrouve porté. La question de la culture, pour nous qui, qui sommes dans des théâtres, la question de l'art, mais surtout de la culture dans le sens très large, dans le sens de la capacité à fédérer des nouvelles relations, pour nous, vraiment une priorité. Au moment où, ensemble, avec toi, Marco, nous avons traversé cette période de la pandémie et tous les théâtres ont dû être fermés euh, en Europe, où nous avons vu la difficulté euh, extrême de recommencer, de réouvrir, même si euh, le public qui va déjà dans les théâtres était heureux d'être présent. Nous avons vu aussi que cette période était aussi une période inattendue pour nous. Plus de 4 milliards de personnes confinées en même temps sur la planète. Cela nous interroge et je dirais même cela, comme on l'a dit ensemble à Florence, nous oblige à réfléchir notre avenir, notre avenir partagé avec la population et avec d'autres domaines que euh, le domaine artistique. Donc, fort de, de toutes ces questions, euh, pardon aujourd'hui de ne pas pouvoir être à Florence, je m'en excuse, on en avait parlé ensemble, euh, je dois être à Lisbonne parce que, comme vous le savez, je suis président de l'année France-Portugal, justement d'une relation aussi qui euh, se développe au sein de l'espace européen euh, où euh, nous travaillons aussi sur ces questions euh, européennes. Il est essentiel pour moi, dans cette introduction avec toi, Marco, de rappeler que, euh, puisque nous venons tous de cette Europe et euh, nous sommes les héritiers de cet humanisme européen, euh, comment nous pouvons partager alors une vision commune sur les enjeux euh, de notre avenir euh, la, la question de la jeunesse comme priorité nous a amené depuis trois ans, comme l'a dit Marco, à travailler à cette charte 18-21, c'est-à-dire une charte européenne, mais pour une Europe de la culture, une Europe où nous défendons cette idée où la culture doit être le centre dans la capacité à partager, à échanger pour le plus grand nombre dans l'idée de la défi culturelle. C'est un combat aussi euh, au sein de l'Europe. Euh, nous l'avons vu avec les élections en France. Le risque aussi euh, de la montée des extrémismes est réel. Ça n'est pas juste euh, euh, un chiffon rouge que nous agitons. C'est une inquiétude qui est partagée par de grands nombres parce que nous voyons le désarroi, la séparation aussi qui existe auprès des, des populations. 
Donc nous avons euh, euh, cette volonté de construire cette idée simple, très simple, euh, qui est une idée, euh, je dirais, qui est basée sur la manière de construire des nouveaux ponts, la manière de construire des nouvelles relations pour une Europe du XXIe siècle. Nous venons tous d'une Europe du XXe siècle qui a connu deux guerres mondiales. Nous savons que le théâtre en Europe, en particulier au XXe siècle, l'art du théâtre, mais aussi de la danse, de la musique, s'est extraordinairement développé dans beaucoup de villes du monde européen et qui sont des villes-monde qui accueillent le monde qui sont ouvertes justement à cette relation européenne. C'est ce cette relation à la proximité qui aussi est, je dirais, euh, euh, la force de notre travail, mais dans une vision toujours cosmopolite et en particulier européenne. Comment travailler pour le proche et le lointain, pour ce qui est proche de nous et ce qui est lointain en même temps, justement, c'est ce que nous interrogeons avec cette charte. Alors, cette charte, elle, elle dit justement comment tenter ensemble de faire quelque chose qui est évolu. Le disait Marco, qui est un parcours. Aujourd'hui, nous lançons ce parcours à travers cette journée, d'autres journées à construire ensemble. J'espère que nous pourrons en construire avec nos amis que je salue en, en Roumanie, aussi au Portugal, en Allemagne, dans d'autres pays, pour que ce parcours européen, justement, de cette idée de du partage à travers un théâtre qui est ouvert au monde de la science, au monde de l'éducation, au monde de l'environnement, au monde de celles et ceux qui s'interrogent sur l'égalité des femmes et des hommes aujourd'hui, que ce soit dans les théâtres ou dans notre société, mais comment le monde de la culture et des arts porte ces valeurs européennes, ces nouvelles valeurs d'une Europe de la culture, pour que l'Europe ne soit pas qu'une Europe économique, une Europe qui pense que des rapports de force entre pays et entre États, et je disais la dernière fois, quand j'étais à Florence, comment nous parlons d'une Europe des pays et non pas seulement d'une Europe des nations et qu'au sein de ces pays, la culture est l'acte fondamental. Donc, concrètement, nous avons mis en place, pour témoigner rapidement, de cette relation entre la science et les arts à travers euh, des astrophysiciens qui travaillent avec nous aujourd'hui à Paris, mais aussi du rapport avec la médecine, c'est-à-dire comment travailler à une nouvelle culture de la santé parce que nous avons besoin, face à cette pandémie, face à ce qui nous arrive et ce qui continue d'arriver, aussi d'interroger le rapport entre la culture et la santé et comment nous pouvons penser ensemble, au sein euh, du monde des théâtres européens, une nouvelle euh, culture de la santé. Comment nous pensons, évidemment, cette question de l'égalité des femmes et des hommes, je le disais, et cette question de l'environnement. Comment nous ouvrons nos théâtres à des projets avec la jeunesse avec la jeunesse que nous avons appelée 18-21, c'est-à-dire avoir 18 ans au 21e siècle, les êtres majeurs de ce nouveau siècle. Il y a deux autres sujets qui sont très importants dans ce que nous avons évoqué avec, avec Marco, qui est évidemment l'Europe du plurilinguisme, une Europe faite des langues, de toutes ces langues différentes où nous ne parlons pas qu'en anglais, mais où nous partageons aussi la beauté des différentes des langues. Et que l'acteur, évidemment, est au centre de cette question des langues et du plurilinguisme, parce que c'est l'acteur européen que nous défendons, parce qu'il porte l'acteur en lui, fondamentalement, toutes ces cultures, à travers tous ces poètes, tous ces auteurs, toutes les sonorités des langues européennes qui en font sa richesse et, duquel, et face auxquelles, je dirais, nous devons encourager aussi nos publics, et notre jeunesse, à travers la relation à l'acteur, à aimer une langue étrangère. C'est-à-dire, finalement, c'est cette question de l'étranger, ce rapport à ce qui ne nous est pas familier, à ce que nous ne connaissons pas, ce qui ne fait pas partie d'abord de notre culture personnelle, là que nous pouvons acquérir ensemble comme une culture nouvelle et collective pour la partager. Donc nous avons bien besoin aujourd'hui d'explorer ensemble des nouveaux chemins et c'est ce que nous nous sommes engagés à faire dans cette relation avec Marco, avec le Théâtre de la Ville à Paris, avec vous à la Pela, dans cet endroit extraordinaire où nous aimons nous rendre et travailler avec vous, pour inventer dans cette période, je dirais, où nous avons été frappés par la pandémie, aujourd'hui bouleversés par ce qui se passe en Ukraine, l'urgence, je dirais, de nouvelles alliances. Nous devons construire des nouvelles alliances, c'est dans ce sens que nous travaillons avec nos équipes, à Paris, nous avons constitué une équipe 
autour des consultations poétiques, autour d'artistes qui s'engagent auprès des populations pour dire de la poésie, mais aussi de la musique, mais aussi de la danse, c'est-à-dire les arts frères, comment il y a une fraternité aussi entre les arts au sein de notre travail à Paris, au Théâtre de la Ville, qui permet justement ce dialogue entre des artistes de disciplines différentes, aussi avec des mondes de cultures différentes comme la culture scientifique, la culture de l'éducation, la culture de l'environnement, la culture euh, du, du rapport entre les femmes et les hommes avec cette volonté d'égalité, de liberté partagée dans un monde que nous sentons se replier et nous voyons aujourd'hui les risques face auxquels nous sommes. Donc il est urgent pour nous de construire de manière positive et avec enthousiasme, non pas par peur, non pas par réaction, mais par une responsabilité partagée face à laquelle nous nous trouvons et dans laquelle nous avons envie ensemble de nous engager. Voilà, voilà le, notre chemin. Je remercie évidemment toutes les équipes parisiennes aussi qui sont avec vous à Florence. Je, je salue les intervenants artistes aussi qui vont faire les consultations poétiques aujourd'hui à Florence, mais aussi les consultations musicales et dansées. Je sais que beaucoup sont venus de d'autres pays. Je salue les artistes ukrainiens qui sont accueillis aujourd'hui à Florence. Je vous salue et je vous remercie énormément pour être venu aussi, même si je ne pouvais pas être avec vous présent. Et je vous retrouverai avec joie en présentiel à Paris pour la prochaine séance et la prochaine session d'échange, de dialogue. Pendant un an, nous allons construire ce chemin pour pouvoir, après, justement, prendre, je dirais, des voies nouvelles, nous engager ensemble dans des voies nouvelles. Merci à toi, Marco. Merci, Stéphane. Merci à toutes les équipes. Et pardonnez-moi d'avoir été un peu long. Thank you, Manuel. You have clearly highlighted uh, the issues that I just uh, uh, mentioned, and that will be the starting point, the basis on which we would like to have our uh, debate. Uh, we don't have much time, so I won't be too long. I just would like to underline the importance of the poetic and musical events uh, that are scattered around our city today. There will be one final event at 6.30 this evening. Now the floor to Corina Suteu. You can stay here. Those who want to speak can go to the podium or speak from their position. Buongiorno. Be here. I, in fact, I, um, uh, I do not represent a theater. <laughs> I um, have a um, place, my place in, in Bucharest. Uh, is a sort of an interdisciplinary hub, a creative hub called Insula Patrujdoi, Island 42. And I do um, 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 think that basically, even if I'm not a theater, I'm a sort of a, a, a theater of ideas. This was the uh, objective I had when I created this space a number of years ago. Uh, my, my, my point of view regarding um, the um, uh, charter that, uh, that was initiated by Théâtre de la Ville and by other theatres in Europe is that the interest, for example, that I have in Insula Patruze Chidoi, Island 42, is to, first of all, uh, um, to realize a new bridge of communication indeed with the new generations. This was my first um, idea. The initiative was born from the fact that I realized that younger generation in Romania, in Eastern Europe, but also in Western Europe, are extremely cut from their historical background. It's, it's very difficult to, to, to really uh, make them understand how historically the context in which we live today came to be. And even during now this very, very uh, strong shock that we have regarding the, the war in Ukraine, we realize that uh, not knowing history, it's a, a, a way of being completely unable to react and to understand the nuances and the importance of a historical moment. So Island 42 is first of all a place where ideas are staged 
so that they can be communicated and transmitted to younger generations who need this kind of sacred space of dialogue which is free of preconceived ideas of ideological imposition and dominance. Uh, second interest that I uh, have and we have with this space is to again create also a space for interdisciplinarity. We all know that we live today in societies that are in a certain way completely atomized. We do not look over our shoulder to see what the others are doing. And again, this transdisciplinarity, for example, in Romania and in Eastern Europe, is translated by a lack of interest for the urban space, for the space we live in. Sometimes our contexts are, are completely abandoned, as if we live inside them, but, but we do not interact with them. So this, again, is something that I find in the Charter and in my conversations with Emmanuel de Marcy Mota, I realize that it, I'm, I'm very much in uh, synchronicity with this idea. And a last idea I want to put forward is that, uh, unfortunately, we see that more and more uh, the creatives, the artists, are out from the decision-making process or the fact that they are out from the decision-making process is translated immediately in a way of responding uh, uh, to the world from the margins. So we have to bring the creatives back into this decision-making process, but in an active and efficient way, not only by rhetorics, but also by the fact that they can bring their innovation, their ideas, their capacity to create context back into, uh, into the world that we are um, uh, living in today. Because concentrating only on the material world we forget that basically what creates the world is the spiritual world. This space here, so splendid, was first created by the spirit, not by material, uh, material uh, uh, acts. So, so we, we have to bring this kind of, uh, of feeling back and reality back to our worlds. And I believe that all of us uh, at our small islands, in our small islands, uh, bear this uh, kind of responsibility. Again, I'm very happy to be here and very happy to be in this context of theater people because theater is, uh, is still uh, the, one of the only live uh, arts that, that can communicate directly. Thank you. Grazie. Grazie veramente. Thank you, Karina. Thank you for uh, the topics you mentioned, you highlighted. Uh, these issues are surely um, topics that will be mentioned later on as well. I cannot go on commenting on this because we have uh, time constraints. Now uh, the floor to Jayton Nezirai, remotely connected from uh, Pristina. Now the floor is yours. I suppose that was uh, to let me know that I can I can talk now. Si, si. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you and uh, hello and greeting, greetings from Pristina, Kosovo. Thank you for having me today. For the last 10 years, our theater company I worked with was producing and uh, co-producing over some uh, 20 theater shows. And I have to say that uh, every single theater show that we created had uh, artists coming from at least three theater European countries. And many of those uh, shows were co-produced with different theater uh, partners from, from Europe. Engaging and exchanging with international artists, it's a way how we understand theater and how we want to see theater. Our ideal theater has many colors has different languages, has different sounds, but similar concerns, similar dramas, similar traumas, and similar dreams. Because those are 
all similar in Kosovo, in France, in Italy, and elsewhere. Um, coming from a very poor and isolated country, and uh, remember, Kosovars are the only Europeans that do, not, that do need visa to travel to Europe, exchange and interaction with other European theatre partners and artists, it's not just an artistic, but also a political act. Yes, a political act. An exchange and interaction like, like this becomes a political act. And not only for us in Kosovo. In these times when, where we see Europe with the increasing xenophobia and racism, and where we see the anti-foreigner sentiments growing, the rise of nationalism and authoritarianism, exchange and cooperation in Europe is a political act. Yes, it's a political act. Uh, it's a political act when a Serbian uh, composer comes to do uh, to compose a music for a, a Kosovo theater play. It is a political act. It becomes a political act when Hungarian artists are together on stage with Italian, Bosnian, or any other artists. It's a message we are conveying to the audience, to the politicians, and above all, above all to ourselves. We are seeing now, but also in the past, how our curiosity for the others in, is increased only when there is a war, when there is a tragedy, and when there are uh, political turbulences. Suddenly, everybody is wanting to stage or present some Ukrainian plays now, nowadays. All of a sudden, we all want to know more about Ukraine. And this is good, but this curiosity will disappear soon, unfortunately. Yes, um, money, respectively the lack of money, is our enemy. Yes, language barriers are there, and they are an obstacle. But our biggest enemy and the main obstacle is lack of curiosity. If curiosity to know the others is there, then both barriers I mentioned, money and language, languages will become irrelevant. And not only those, but any other barriers will disappear and become irrelevant. So how do we make people curious for the others? So how do we keep our curiosity for a country, for a culture and for the others, not only when there is some sort of national emergency? How do we build constant curiosity for the others? Curiosi curiosity that goes beyond our uh, views on culture, that goes beyond our language knowledge and beyond our geographical borders? How do we build and encourage curiosity that goes beyond the exotism, beyond the safari perspective, that goes beyond any colonial approach, that goes beyond the curiosity we show while visiting a zoo? By curiosity, I mean knowledge. I mean going deep into the culture of the other, into the intimacy of the other culture. And this, as I mean, Malov says can be done only through culture. Yes, we need to know the other cultures and societies in, the, in their intimacy, not just superficially. How? How can this be done? By doing theater, by wanting to do theater in, in its full colors, by exchanging and interacting, by cooperating in cultural projects, by daring, by willing, by trying. Thank you. Grazie molto. Thank you, Ieton, for your contribution. I would like to remind you uh, that when it comes to obstacles, with Giacomo Perini, we will talk about a project together with uh, uh, Ieton Edirai's theatre. This is a first step that allows me to make a first comment when Pamela Villoresi was appointed in Palermo, we immediately talked about Europe right away. We, start, we, we connected immediately, despite the distance. So it's a pleasure for me. And I think it's very um, important that you say something about this. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm 65. And uh, I've been working for 50 years. When I was 18, I started working at Piccolo Teatro in Milan with Streller. 
and I saw the creation of the Union of European Theatres. It took us years. And uh, the center was the Odeon in Paris. And many of the countries that are represented here, well, I visited them working in Bucharest, in uh, Paris. And we traveled all over Europe, in Spain as well. And uh, the wonderful thing about this was the fact that we had a common ground, culture, theater, speaking different languages, but with the common language of theater. Being the spokespeople uh, for Europe, the European community, European Union arrived later. And when I became a, a, a manager of the theater, I decided that I wanted to be part of the associations. I knew there was disagreements uh, and uh, things uh, were a bit difficult. And so many of the theaters that were part of the union left. But I think it's important to rebuild uh, an institution that allows us to be together, to cooperate, just as we do inside our own countries. Because our own role of representatives, we know that culture um, seem to have forgotten our its role. We um, seem to forget our role. Of course, uh, even when there are elections, we have to remember that um, we see that culture has isolated itself. It's kind of a game that few players get to play. We need to change things. We need to go back to being an agora, uh, a square, a place where people come to listen to stories. Culture and theater cannot give answers. It's not our task, but it, our task is to ask questions, uh, share doubts, so that we can give answers to our life. What we are experiencing right now, what we are going through right now, is a very delicate moment. We, are, we have the pandemic and we have the war. We have huge economic problems uh, linked also to the survival of our planet. And we cannot work in isolation anymore. We need to be the loudspeaker, so to say, of society. This is something that we've started doing during the lockdown period. And we were awarded uh, with the Sikh Center Award uh, for being among the 10 uh, theaters that did excellent things uh, during the lockdown. We started collecting the scripts, many scripts, and we had them uh, online. We put them online, and then we created two performances and we want to continue in this direction. But the point is that we have to go back to being uh, the talking cricket, let's say, of society, the loudspeaker of society. We want to be the place where people come when they want to understand and find where they should go. Because now we see, we see the same answers for everyone on uh, future problems. The answers that we give are the same because we can survive. We can win this challenge only if we work together. And so I would like to conclude my speech by saying that you know that my uh, theater, Teatro Biondo, is going through a critical uh, stage right now. In Sicily, the problems are even bigger. So we did not receive the funds that we were entitled to receive. So this is a very difficult moment. But we will manage to overcome these problems. And we will do so because we've seen that thanks to synergies, we can create wonderful things. We can find new ways that we didn't thought we didn't think, sorry, 
we could find. So I hope this will be just a starting point for a path that we will walk along together, and not just us in uh, us and Florence or us and the Théâtre de la Ville, but a path that we will walk along together. So this is the starting point. And hopefully our ministry will um, increase the sensitivity to this because we need uh, financial support for this. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. You really gave us food for thought. And uh, you clearly told us how important it is to have this, how important it is to create uh, moments in which we can talk, we can share, in order to create the institutions, the bodies that are so important to uh, bring about projects. Now the floor to Carmen Portaceli uh, from the Teatro Nacional de Catalunya. I apologize for my pronunciation if I pronounce them wrong. To, uh, to thank you because I've been invited here and I think it's a very important um, uh, initiative to launch this in initiative to be together. We have been talking about that yesterday night. I think it's very, very important to be together and to be able to defend ourselves and the culture from this threat that we all have in, in the whole planet with the uh, right uh, wings, extreme right wings knocking at the door. Uh, in, in, in France, we've been now about to leave something. I remember I've been told a short time ago that Coltes said a long time ago um, when uh, front, uh, Le Front National uh, will be more than 5%, five percent, I will leave France. And now it's 41%. So, I mean, it's a very difficult moment. In Spain, we are living through the same little bit. We now we are keeping with a lot of difficulties, uh, social democrat, uh, and, and I think a good government. But it's all the time in danger, in danger, in danger. So uh, it's it's a very difficult moment. <clears throat> Me, I'm coming from a country, as all you know, that has been living through a dictatorship, a very difficult one, and a, a dictatorship who who was uh, tapped on the shoulder by the whole Europe because it was useful to stop the communism uh, and it was a very difficult for all the exiled people who went to Argelès and they were treated like dogs there and uh, it was very difficult for us and we have been um, living through 40 years in the silence, in the fear and in the shame. And after that we've been <coughs> into a democracy and it was very Easy. It seems very easy to go out from dictatorship because we are very, a very vital country, really. But we didn't understand really what the democracy was, and now we are into the, 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 the populisms as everybody without knowing really what and what's not democracy. Um, I think we are in a time of changes and ruptures, and we, people, theater people, we have to, to, to transmit them, to convey them to the audience, to the public, with a language that reaches the heart and not as if it was uh, one of the million of news that are arriving to us every, every day. I think we've been, we are in this moment the only place that we are able to receive people, to be together, to beat and breathe together, to, 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 to to think about things together and that theater is, is a place that equal everybody. And, and that we, for instance, we, we are playing with people, we, are <clears throat> we have the, the commitment to be a bit aware, a bit conscious of what we are saying, of what we are doing, of, of everything we are explaining to them. Uh, I will, because I, I didn't want to, to be too long, um, I, I, was, uh, I will explain to you a, a 
project that we have uh, from the beginning of my tenure, uh, like uh, as a, an artistic director, first of all in Teatro Español and that now in Teatro Nacional uh, of Catalonia, I've been trying to put my country in contact with Europe because as, we told, as I told you before, after 40 years of dictatorship, uh, giving our back to, the, to Europe, I suppose that they were leading us astray to, to not to see what was happening outside. And, and now it has been very difficult for us to join you all the time. But from the beginning of my tenure there, uh, from um, 2016, I, am, I have been trying to connect with Europe. And we have been doing uh, a project uh, that we made up together, and I, and, and I thought about that, uh, called Between Lands. I will explain to you only for you to know the, the spirit of that, because I think, I think it's very difficult not to be philosophic nowadays, you know. Uh, this project called Between Lands, mm, referring to uh, the, the name of Mediterranean, Between the Lands, uh, in the middle of lands, uh, we brought together uh, La Comédie de Reims, uh, Teatro Nacional San Joao the, of Porto, uh, KVS, uh, Royal uh, Flemish Theatre in Brussels, um, uh, Teatro Nacional of Catalonia, and uh, ERT, Emilia Romagna Teatro, that we made uh, up this um, project with Claudio Longhi, and now there's uh, Walter, Walter Malosti there. And Within, among us, we have two organizations, very important one, Corte Ospitale, maybe you know that, the Italian people, because they are uh, helping us and working with us to debate, for, to, to create debates, interesting debates with the public and so on. And uh, Actualites Edition, uh, because there is uh, a very important, we, we, don't, we have a, a lot of translations, I will explain, you, you will see, you will guess why. Uh, it is about choosing an author from each country of those countries. It has to be completely equal, this is one of our mandatory rules, and we start working with a collective. Uh, the project is for the time being, for four years, and each country leads a, team, a theme. Portugal, for instance, which is the first one, is going to lead adolescence. Uh, they are going to do a very uh, deep uh, uh, field work with adolescents, etc., and the other countries can do whatever they want about that, apart of choosing the, the, the playwright, the author. Uh, Italy is going to talk and to lead decolonization in 2023. France and Belgium are going to lead migrants uh, in 2024, and, and Catalonia is going to lead violence against women. And, um, and also, we do something that, that I think is very interesting for each call. Uh, one author from a non-European country uh, will be invited. For instance, in, in Catalonia, concretely, for uh, talking about uh, violence against women, we will, we will invite a, a girl, an author, a woman, a very interesting one, from a very, very uh, interesting group called Zukak from Liban. She will be writing with us. Um, each country in charge of the theme does uh, field work, as I told you, with a collective. The other countries uh, will do whatever they want, creating an audiovisual podcast or whatever, whatever they need to show what they have done. After that, um, uh, bring, we bring all the authors together in a residency, each country, the leader one, uh, and they are 10 days together in a residency trying to be out of the city for not to be distracted with anything. They are together, uh, locked down into a place, and they will be, there will be debates and, uh, for instance, with the psychologists or pedagogues or philosophers or economists or whatever, and they will discuss, they will see all the material that we have built, and then they will go home and they will write a little text of about 15 minutes. That will do a whole play that we will do as a mise en espace uh, afterwards in a very important day called the TD Day, the Theatre Democracy Day. This will be a party because I think it's very important to, to have these kind of parties to be together uh, and each theatre will decide what activities they, they will 
be able to do what they want to do. And of course, all the collectives, because we are working with the collective, with the migrants, with the women, um, but treated women, which is very delicate because you know that they are usually, they are anonymous, they are very afraid because they can be killed, of course. And uh, all this place will be translated, for instance, my play in Catalan will be translated into English and I will translate into Catalan all the other plays. So we will have all these plays in six languages that will belong and become part of a library of democracy which is available to anyone who wishes to access it and which is growing every year with different uh, themes approached from very different perspectives. There are other projects, like for instance, a project that we call Vibrations, and it is very interesting because we call uh, just degree uh, person, we did it with France last year with a very young girl called um, uh, uh, Jade Magna, who came to do a mise en scène with very young people of a, an, a very particular and a special and young version, of course, of one of our uh, repertoire plays. She came here to Barcelona. She was 10 days rehearsing over the stage and she did what she wanted over this stage. And there were, there were for instance, plenty of young people there and people who, was, uh, who were saying that the dream was acting in the big venue of Teatro Nacional de Catalunya and they were doing that for the first time in their lives. And, they, and this, uh, were, this was opening their hopes. I, uh, and another, okay, and that's why I wrote, but I didn't read anything. <laughs> so, uh, the only thing I wanted to tell you, what reason would there be today to be a bit curious, a bit enthusiastic? Hope. I think it's the only thing that we can offer. Hope. We believe in this hope that we do not have today. This is a moment of rethinking our minds and our lives, our histories and therefore our future. We need to get together and share the space and we need to cultivate this space shared. None of us can do it alone. We have to do it all together. Thank you. Thank Carmen. Thank you, Carmen, for this wonderful experience also involving many Italian theatres. We're very happy Italy is a partner of this work. I, I pass the floor to Jana now. By the Teatre, Estonia. I pass the floor to Estonia. Jan. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll stand up just because, so that you would have a change in view. Uh, my dear ladies and gentlemen, colleagues uh, from all across the continent, I'm really happy to be here. And I must say that I had a speech prepared for this occasion. Um, but early this morning, I received news from back home um, that the situation has arisen and I can't give the speech that I that I wanted to. I'm coming from Estonia, and um, the theater that I lead uh, is a small theater. It's called Baide Teater, and it was, we started it uh, just four years ago. So, for example, Teatro della Pergola, that has a history of centuries, and many others here that have history of decades and decades and decades, who have uh, hundreds of people working there, this is not the case for us. Our theatre has been working for four years. Two of them have been in the situation of coronavirus. So <laughs> it has been quite a journey. And we aren't working with hundreds of people in our group, but it's, it's just six people. Me, a dramaturg, a producer, and three actors, performers. But last night, um, a decision was made in the local council that our funding is going to be cut. So therefore, when I go back to Estonia in a few days, I don't even know whether we still have that theater that was started four years ago. In such events, here, today, but also 
those events happening in Brussels every day or in Paris or in Berlin or wherever, we often talk about collaboration, about coming together, about helping each other. But today, in the wake of the situation that has arisen for me personally, for my theater, I think that I will ask for your help. Even though my theater, our theater is a young one, and for that reason, we haven't had decades to build international connections with theaters from across Europe. We haven't maybe had time to get to know everyone, but that makes me even more grateful to be here today and to tell you the story of the theater and ask for your help that even if we should lose our house in the coming weeks or coming months, even if we should lose our salaries and everything else that we've built over the last four years, then that you would still invite us to be a part of some project, projects that you are working with. Because I do think that in the 21st century, a theater is not a building first and for all. Theater must be a space that doesn't necessarily need to have an Italian stage and lightning and microphones and sound system. It must have something else. It must have people who have ideals, who have hope indeed, and who can create spaces where people from really different walks of life, but also people who are separated by different ideas, political ideas, ideas about, uh, I don't know, vaccination, about climate change, whatever. But those spaces where those people can come together and understand that there is more that unites us than there is what separates us. So to, to end my small speech here, I will just tell you about a project that we did a year ago. A year ago, Estonia was still in lockdown, and uh, the theatres, we had no idea, as didn't you all, when are we allowed to open again, and how is it going to be? But we decided to build a podium on the main square of our town. It's a small town of 8,000 people. And we built a podium there for 33 evenings. And every evening at six o'clock, a person would go on the podium and give a speech about the possible future. Those people, those 33 people, were from the president of Estonia and the prime minister up till local teachers, local youth and farmers. So we had millionaires and people who have nothing, all talking about the possible futures, all talking from their own perspective, but sharing their perspective with the people who came there. But the one thing that was really important for us, and I, I also think that it was important for the audience, was that everyone knew all the 33 names, but no one knew who was going to speak when. So when you got there, I don't know, Tuesday evening, May 2021, you didn't know whether you were going to hear the president or the local school teacher. And it's so important, in my opinion, in today's world, where when a person who we know is from a right-wing party goes on stage, then we already know that I won't trust anything he says. Absolutely. And if I would be a right-wing person, then if someone from the Social Democratic Party would go on stage, I would already know that it's nothing, nothing is truth about it. But I think that we must give, us, uh, give, uh, give ourselves a possibility to be surprised by people, to see that people can have different ideas and that people can change, they can evolve, they can come to understand the world in a different way. So, Thank you for this event, and really.
ask for my email, ask for my phone number. I will give it to you and help me. Noi vogliamo che il teatro ci sia da domani, che continui. E questo è uno dei nostri punti oggi, l'aiuto, l'appello che tu ci lasci. So the, the support, so the help you need is our personal commitment. I want to say this on behalf of the Fondazione Teatro della Toscana. Let's count on us, and not only on us, I hope. We do want the theater to go, to go on living. Cornelia from Düsseldorf, can I give you the floor? You can talk if you want. Hello everybody, uh, good morning from Düsseldorf and um, I'm very happy of being able to be here, even if remote and I can't see you all. Um, I mean, like many of you, I am shaken about what Jan told us right now and of course I have prepared a speech and it feels a little bit awkward now to just, uh, well, to just go ahead and uh, start at a very different point, um, especially coming from Germany, from a maybe very different theater place than Jan explained to us right now. The Sudofer Schauspielhaus is a very huge theater in Germany. It's an old theater. It is a, a house with more than 400 people working in it and a house with more than 30 productions a season. So um, a well-funded house and um, of course uh, you might imagine that it is, uh, it's a strange feeling now to, to proceed uh, when I just heard about, uh, yeah, how things are difficult in a very, very more, um, yeah hard way in other countries and of course just I was on, I, I thought about how to how to proceed and where to start now and I think maybe there is something of course besides networks and that it is important to stay together during these days uh, that there is one thing that might be a common point and that is uh, the idea that theaters are uh, not only the buildings that we know, the buildings that are able with a huge effort to bring uh, art on stage, but there are also places to gather, places to be, places to meet people. And uh, that is something that we are thinking about a lot during the last years, especially during the last years when we were shut like many of you too. And we had, well, in a way, <laughs> no audience, but time to, to think about how we, can, how we can deal with the situation that we have many, many resources, that we have a huge building, that we have much space, and that we want to share this space with as many people as possible. And um, uh, especially during uh, times like these, um, times of changes, times of rapture and um, uh, connected to all these challenges of iron, environmental matters, social matters, economical matters that are um, the basis of, of many of our discussions. And what we started at Düsseldorf is um, to, to look for, for possibilities and ways to, to open the theater to the, to the social initiatives in town. Uh, to bring in people who are usually not part of our house, not part of our art, and not part of what is happening on stage. And we found several ways, several formats to, to, to bring people in our house and uh, to let them tell our sto their, their stories, um, to bring in different perspectives and um, yeah, to learn to know of each other and that is something um, that not only needs the willing to do that but it also needs um, of course flexibility and time and that is something that is um, I think crucial to what uh, we all want to to do and to share even if we meet here it is uh, that we need to find uh, time and we need to find space 
to have the opportunity to come in another way of working together and uh, to have the opportunities to to hear each other, to get in touch, to maybe connect, to relate, and also uh, not only to exchange, but maybe even help each other. And um, uh, maybe just one single um, one single uh, thing that is uh, one of many things we try to do and what are we are thinking about is how when how can we find ways to get the flexibility in a theater like ours in a place like ours in a cultural place like ours the flexibility to being able to react on situations like the ones that we are all um, experience and experiencing uh, during the last uh, weeks and months, for example, and we all know that this might be a situation that won't end very quick and it might come up in different situations that bring in challenges, social challenges to us that we will have to change our ways of working and to become the flexibility of reacting. And uh, what we do right now, for example, is to uh, give our stage to, to artists of the Ukraine who came to Dusseldorf to work uh, together with them and to give them the opportunity to have professional work on our stages also together with refugees that are um, situated at our town. That, for example, is just one example to what we are thinking about, what we do. And I think, um, yeah, what it means is that we have to open rooms and we have to open spaces in uh, literally and also in, uh, well, in, uh, in the way of uh, giving space of thinking, giving room, giving time of thinking and working together besides what we are all used to do, our artistic productions and uh, what we were used to bring on stage so far. Uh, that is uh, just a small idea and maybe a small thought that I'd like to share with you and I'm very happy of being part of this panel tonight, today and um, yeah thank you so much for letting me being part of that thank you thank you Cornelia I would like to introduce Dubrav to Deutsch of the National Theatre from Zagreb, Croatia. First of all, I would like to thank you to invite me here in this beautiful palazzo full of history. I'm happy to be with you to share my thoughts and my fears because I think that this is a very difficult, very dangerous, but also the very important time for all of us when we have to save the theatre save the art, but also to save our lives. I would just like to go a little bit back, uh, exactly two years ago, when all of us, during this period, uh, shut up the door of our theaters. It was never happened in the whole history of the theaters than in one week, the whole world, not only European, but the whole world theater were closed. And that's we were completely uh, stuck in the unknown land. Um, two years ago, nowadays, we know how we struggle during this time, how many problems we have, how many difficulties we passed, and how we learned to be more stronger. During this period, the culture, but especially our art, theater, became more fragile and became really, really weak. After this, now there's a lot of fears we are sharing together. There is a fear of, uh, there, is a, there, there are, the, first of all, there is a fear in a many countries, in the many theaters of lack of an audience. Then also there is a fears of inflation, of economical crisis which will phase in. There is also fears of the political decision 
which is uh, not only in my part of the Europe, but also we saw after the um, French election, also in the Western part, there is a big, big influences and big develop of right-wing fears. So there is so many things what we are now facing in the theater, and we maybe we don't know how to deal with this. So I think that it's really, really very important that we have some strategy, and that this strategy should come here, I mean, in together. Because we were never thinking that in the 20th century, 21st century, such kind of catastrophe could happen, especially not for us. Theater is always like safe place in this or other ways. We like a crisis because the crisis really innovative, can make some innovative form for us, but this crisis was not like this. Because this crisis of COVID make many excuses that make theater not important. I talked with Norwegian colleague who during the pandemic time uh, closed the theater for, theater for eight months. And now they were really worried what will be happen about the economical status of the theater. Because politicians saw after five, six, ten months, theater were closed, and nobody really complained. Nothing happened. It was not the end of the world. So theater seems not to be important. And that means that the financial result will not be as big as it was before. And this is completely wrong. Because you couldn't measure culture with health of education or other part of the society. I think everything is important, but theater and art is really, really important, not only for us, but all, for all of people around us. I could just say an um, example what we did in Croatia during the pandemic time. Fortunately, we were closed only two weeks, two months, from March to May 2020. But even the end, and then was, uh, we were um, open all the time. So maybe this is the reason we don't have a problem with the audience at the moment. But even during this COVID time, when everything was closed, we were going in the different area on city of Zagreb in a 10 different neighborhood. We just took one piano, uh, we, uh, two uh, opera singers, two actors who was reading a poetry, and we st stood in some part of the, in the square or in a park, and the people came, and, and there was like really uh, like a party. Everybody was there, the young people, the grandparents, the, 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 all the people who were not working, who didn't go outside, stayed home. Some of them looked at us in the balcony or the terrace. And it was a feeling like a sharing something, the same attitudes, the same fears, the same wishes. And that was something what proved that the theater was really important. In this time, like therapeutic uh, resources, and also artistic resources and also like community resources, like also to be together. I think this is something what, what we learned from this time that is really important that we share our, our feeling, our wishes, our fears with the citizen of the city. And the theater, as you already said, is not the beautiful building with the history. The theater could be everywhere, in every part of the city, in every part of the country, where people are together and they're doing something artistically. <laughs> and that's, I think, this is some hope for, not only for a theater, but I think for a Europe, because with this Ukrainian war, we also see that Europe is very weak and it's very fragile. And it's not stable in the moment. And I think that's only if we are together, if we show up during the COVID time, that we can do something. So I think that is really important at the moment of the different crises we face in Europe, that we theater people stay together, have clear strategy what we want, and save the theater from all fears we are faced with. Grazie molte Dubravka. Thank you, Dubravka. Now the last speech, uh, a remote speech, and then I will ask Giacomo to conclude this first part. I think uh, Vidas Pisunevicius should be connected so we can give the floor to him. We have five minutes. Thank you.
I'd say hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you here. Uh, thank you for the invitation and having been a company of all these amazing institutions and theaters and thinking about the future. Uh, sharing, listening to you all, I'm hearing a lot of interesting things and uh, somehow, of course, we're in a face of huge and grave challenges this time, but uh, us seeing Lithuania being so close to the Ukraine, for example, for us, uh, the war, uh, COVID stopped in February 24th. No war was existing, no COVID was existing in Lithuania since then, and it doesn't exist anymore, for example. So, uh, but thinking about this time with such a huge and grave, I don't know, troubles all around us for everybody, we're thinking and uh, wanting to see future brighter in very three somehow um, important, I think so, visions or points in the future. So first of all, of course, we're thinking about globally about us uh, as a human beings, as societies, as institutions in this world trying to, you know, make it less carbon footprint in the world and trying to reduce all these uh, and stabilize how we're behaving. Secondly, what we're really thinking and feeling is this uh, situation of, of uh, common understanding or solidarity. Like this is what I think uh, we are thinking is missing a lot. Like in Lithuania, there's a lot of everybody thinking and talking about unity. Oh, we're not so united. We're not so united. But I think societies now are cracking in between ourselves. And uh, it's not about unity that we're missing. It's about a um, common understanding or ability to hear and to speak to each other and to be able to understand and respect somebody other's opinion. So I think this is what is actually a lot of missing for the moment right now. And what we are trying and trying to achieve and make kind of forum and the agora of the theater and make it for communities. So that's why it's important for us to think about it collectively together, how to bring people together, being able to speak to each other. Like different opinions are not always the worst and it should be the extreme. But at the same time, we're really thinking about uh, visions about visions and uh, how we feel lack of it actually, no? Like it's, uh, I'm thinking that we're not sure actually where are we heading right now? We, yes, we do have goals for the better future, better feeling of everybody, but what does that actually mean? I think in the last couple of years, we became uh, somehow uh, without imagination maybe, I don't know, like uh, without even uh, a dare, uh, without any bravery without uh, risking is and this is what we want to think about and to get with people and get with institutions together unite the forces and think about daring and uh, maybe sometimes crazy even futures which we could try to think about and fantasize about it in a theater because theater is uh, really a, a place where you can release the tensions and really unite people about what's happening so uh, yeah, COVID was bad, war happened, world is way, very much different. And uh, I think we need some bravery now to step up and think about the brighter future, actually. So this is what we think and would like to propose here. So thank you very much and looking forward to hearing you even more. Thank you. To Vidas from the Teatro Nazionale de Lituania. Sicuramente ci ha dato, I'm sorry, uh, you probably gave us a lot of food for thought. A uh, new strategy, new planning strategy. And uh, there's also an economic uh, requirement uh, at the basis of our need to create bridges. And then all the fears, the role of actors and actresses, all these um, element, these food for thought that you've uh, shared with us will be written down in a document and will be transmitted uh, to European institutions. Now on the floor to Giacomo Pedini, uh, artistic director of Mittelfest. So I would like uh, you to be a bridge towards the second part of the panel. Yes, of course. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mario Giorgetti and uh, the Pergola Theatre for this meeting that for those who come from uh, Mittelfest like myself that looks at Central Europe and the Balkan area is a very important event, this one. I've heard a lot of uh, things and uh, two, two specific topic I think I would like to comment on uh, from a very practical perspective. We talked about the importance of direct uh, bilateral relations, a face-to-face, -face, let's say, um, relation. Now, our festival involves more than 20 European countries, and nowadays the possibility for international relationships are many. As a festival, we have an Italian festival and the European Festival Association, so we can work with festivals. So it's a contact opportunity. But then there are also cultural associations from the, each country. We worked with Onassis, for example. We worked with the Dutch Performing Arts. arts. We have worked with many cultural associations and institutions. And this is not just to exchange uh, ideas and experiences, but also to uh, get to know the artists they work with. So these are relationships also have a creative aspect. But what is even more important is to have a direct relationship. And uh, Together with Trigatro della Pergola, we are at present dealing with a very challenging topic that is cancel culture and the freedom of opinion of artists. So we choose uh, an artist that has a very controversial points of view, especially for those who come from the southern um, western part of the area. So a different relationship with Europe. Uh, we have a kind of Europe, uh, Italy, France, we are familiar with maybe. But there is a whole other part of Europe with a different history. I'm thinking, for example, the last, the second half of the 20th century, uh, if you live in a border area like Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, where I live, this is very clear. This kind of Europe requires a direct relationship to be known. So bilateral relationships are essential. Mittelfest talks to Teatro della Toscana, but then talks to a production center in Kosovo, for example, and then talks to Mess in Sarajevo. I think this is very important to have a direct knowledge. And this is a, a characteristic of our work that we do. And uh, I go back to what you were saying, for example. So uh, this uh, connects me to another very important topic, and that is young people, uh, a generation that is, uh, has become of age in this uh, century and has a role to play now. We are working on Mittel Young, that is our activity with uh, under 30 uh, people. It's a pre-festival for artists that are below 30. Uh, this is an important project uh, uh, in view of uh, direct relationships. So we've been working on this for the last few months. Uh, the shows uh, are chosen by people who are 20. So there is a direct relationship with young people seen as decision makers. And this connects me to a speech made by Corinne, I think. The fact that uh, intergenerational transmission goes through the possibility for young people. I see some teenagers over there. I suppose you're still going to school, right? Yes. 
Um, so the fact that they are placed in a position where they can have a dialogue with decision makers so that they can feel this uh, experience of making a decision. This is a difficult position to be in. It's a challenge. So it's important for them to understand how challenging, tiring, um, stressful can be taking a decision rather than just uh, judging or assessing a decision that was made by someone else. So I think this, uh, should, this kind of uh, initiative should have more space because I think it's a very important uh, part of our work. Thank you. Thank you, Giacomo. Now, as we cannot have uh, a break now, I would leave uh, the participants uh, here on stage uh, mm, free to do as they wish and move if they want. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Pronio. I thanked you at the beginning for giving us this possibility. Thank you. Good morning. I could not be here uh, before because we have some uh, uh, representative from Brussels here. So I would like to thank you all for being here. I would like to thank the speakers and the municipality of Florence. We decided to cooperate with them, with uh, Teatro della Pergola and Teatro de la Ville from Paris. We're very happy to be here and work together for culture. The, the culture program has been refinanced by the European Union with a strong financing. And uh, we believe in the importance of um, showing what Europe can do for the cultural sector. Europe is a very big space and maybe felt uh, distant, but we are everywhere. We are present in Rome, in Milan, and all over Italy with our European training centers. And we would like to um, get closer to the citizens and all operators of the cultural sector. We are more than willing to work together. So this initiative we are taking part in today uh, is a clear sign of this. I saw a wonderful graphic project. I know it's a very successful event. And uh, we um, supported it. And we're very happy to be part of it. So let's now continue with the morning's uh, uh, work. There are still many speakers to hear. And then there will be some new things, uh, some new programs in the musical sector. This is a new program, Music, music Moves Europe. It's a program that will be started in June. There will be other events in Italy to present it. So musicians and operator of the uh, musical world will be involved. So thank you very much. I thank the municipality, the mayor, and all of you who collaborated uh, to uh, bring about all of this. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to Erminia. I don't know if she's the first one to speak. Erminia Cicitano. Good morning. OK, should I start right away? OK. I have a brief presentation. I would like to show it to you. So let's open this second part of our morning with a brief overview of one on one of the initiatives that right now 
in the European Union are um, creating a lot of um, activity. The new European Bauhaus, and yes, they, we heard about the great political importance of this initiative. It is an initiative that when it was born, when I heard for the first time from our President Ursula von der Leyen on her speech on the State of the Union, uh, to talk, I heard her talk about the new European Bauhaus in 2020. I, I really, I was really shocked. I dealt with uh, cultural policies within the European Union for many years. I'm a part of the Ministry of Culture, but I've been in the European Commission for six years. So I, uh, I know how challenging it is for culture to go beyond. Uh, the glass ceiling, so to say. So when uh, President von der Leyen said this, saying that the Green Deal uh, objectives cannot be achieved without culture being at the core of it, well, that really shocked me because it's a sign that something is changing in Europe. And the following year, she said, if the Green Deal has a, a core, a soul, it is the new European Bauhaus. So let's see what, we, what this is all about. The Bauhaus, it's in a way of looking at Europe. It's no longer the Europe of rules, programs. It's a movement. It's a creative, transdisciplinary, transdisciplinary movement that's based on sustainability, our ability to be in touch with the planet. Beauty, once again, in the end, uh, we go back to beauty. And uh, the fact of being together. The key word is inclusion, but I like talking about being together because the word inclusion makes me think that there's someone outside asking someone to be let in. Uh, and I don't like it very much. I think it, it's important to think about being together. So an in-depth transformation of society based on a multidisciplinary and collaborative approach. So the idea behind this is that we can change things if we identify our goals. And innovation is not just technological innovation. Innovation uses other channels intellectual, cultural channels. And we are um, carriers of those channels. So the principles of the new European Bauhaus are the principles of a global and local movement with uh, participation and transdisciplinary approach. Among its pillars, we have a, a the need to reconnect with nature, to uh, recover a sense of belonging, giving priority to people that uh, are in need of it, and trying to remove all obstacles uh, f towards equal opportunity for everybody, and uh, uh, also a long-term uh, um, reflection on the life cycle uh, in the industrial ecosystem. Because think how much the design influences our ecosystem and our ability to have sustainable development. That is uh, uh, important in order to respect uh, the planet's resources. We had six months of co-design. Uh, Many uh, subjects were uh, asked to work together within the world of culture and design. So this is, is not a top-down kind of initiative. It's a bottom-up um, movement. And I'm proud to say that Italy did a great job. 
Out of these 450 partners, official partners of the initiatives, you can see in the right uh, uh, quarter part of the circle is Italy. So this means that when we want to be part of something, we can really give an important contribution to this new way of experiencing Europe. So what's the situation right now? We are in the uh, implementation stage, so the practical stage. So where are we going now? We need to change places. We need to change uh, the ecosystem that uh, allows innovation. And we need to disseminate new meanings through education and culture. And this is not a banal thing to do. Uh, transforming places, transforming the ecosystem that allows innovation to take place because we change the world. Society looks at innovation. And the dissemination of new meanings through education and culture, again, this is something that we can do. It's a challenge, but it is something we can do. We are working on different levels. It may be very complex, but it's very important to start uh, um, spreading this idea. It's like uh, having seeds for new plants. And uh, we have all these actors that have mobilized to uh, participate. We have official partners, experts, and then we have a new group that is friends, and then those who won awards. And then we have new contact, national contact points. I am the national contact point for Italy because the Commission decided they wanted to have a network of contact points because many European policies are implemented, are done through cooperation with national states. Let's think about cohesion policies and structural funds. And we can play our role in this area. And so it's very important that we do. And then we have the NEB Lab. We don't have time to go into detail about this. It's a lab where all actors are working to build meanings. Also analyzing the European legislation, trying to see whether where barriers are present and how we can um, support this through new models for financing also. This is another area where the Commission is working. On the left, we have uh, the list of initiatives within the Green Deal, the fifth uh, for 55 package, for example. There are so many of them. So they will be the key. And here you see the main financing, the main funds, uh, European funds. The, they already include uh, indications concerning the new European Bauhaus. These principles, these values will have to be at the basis of everything we do. So as you see, this is a transformative movement, not something that is adding to the rest. And uh, there are many opportunities that we can take to transform uh, the environment, to um, foster innovation, to transform places, to disseminate meanings. So I will leave the slide, these slides uh, to, uh, to you so that you can go through them. It's full of information for organizers, opportunities for support, financial opportunities, this is just an example of calls um, that are active right now. 
especially on the Horizon Europe program for research and innovation. Five uh, projects were just approved by the European Commission. They are for your urban regeneration. So we are investing in urban regeneration opportunities, trying to foster uh, the transformation in disadvantaged areas. Two, uh, two of these projects see the participation of Italy. So we are present and we've done our own contribution to this. We are talking about projects for 5 million euros each. So there are also other important calls um, for the support of local initiatives uh, within the new European Bauhaus. They are for local authorities that manage less than 100,000 inhabitants to try and uh, innovate with a participative kind of approach, an inclusive approach. There are also calls for by the European Inst uh, Technology Institute, and they are for co-planning, co-design uh, actions uh, for public spaces, uh, for uh, educational activities and social activities, uh, again, within the new European Bauhaus framework. They are for uh, uh, legal uh, entities and private entities. And there are also other opportunities for consortia with at least two partners and at least and, and maximum four partners. So I won't go into technical details right now. There are information sessions uh, online available with a lot of details on how you can participate, what kind of technical information you should provide, uh, the, um, the criteria used for uh, choosing uh, the um, projects. So I would like to conclude uh, talking about how important it is to reward those who are trying to do this, giving visibility to them. Because very often, those who innovate are kind of forgotten. Here, you have the possibility of uh, submitting specific uh, projects uh, for uh, innovative uh, didactical uh, methodologies uh, based on the new methods. And here you see the, those who won the new European Bauhaus Award. We were honored to be on stage together with these young people who are below 30 and who won this award. That includes a uh, financial uh, contribution. They, they talked about how it supported them in uh, continuing their uh, uh, initiative. And this is something very important for y the young generation that is really committed to changing our future. There is now a new European call, 52 um, applicants have been selected. You can vote, if two awards are given by a public vote, so please have a look at uh, this uh, project and uh, give your opinion, give your vote. This way you will also find out about, uh, about them. So there's mm, a bit of everything, new uh, products for the building sector, contemporary art uh, to stimulate urban and social regeneration. Everything will be made uh, visible through the festival from the 9th to the 12th of June. There will be a lot of events. And you will, be see, you will see them online also. Collateral events, two or three per country. Italy organ uh, organized uh, 13 events. And it's a very good sign, I think. Here it's us, national contact points. This is my contact information. I'm really happy to be here as a kind of an ambassador. 
to disseminate this uh, innovation so that it will take place. This is my contact information. Now the floor to my colleagues. Grazie. Thank you. I invite to the uh, podium Anna Conticello. Could you please join us on the stage, please? Project Manager, Sir Ufficio Cultura, Desk Italy, Creative Europe. Hello, good morning, anyone. Thank you for having me for this wonderful day. I was listening to the previous speakers, fully inspired by them. I thank you, Erminia, for your presentation. Before my presentation, her presentation is key because uh, the new European by house gets across all programs, culture, not just uh, Europe, creative Euro, but also we have a call for offers in Horizon in classroom number two for creative and cultural enterprises, a huge success as well because uh, culture was also was also linked with climate changes. Now culture is linked with something something else. And also a uh, Europe creative Europe is very important. So that's uh, a program with direct funding. What's uh, Europa Creativa? That's a program existing for some time from some years. Seven years. So we have the new seven years period, 21-27, uh, with the regulations signed by the European Parliament and by the Council of Europe. And this is, this is approaching different backgrounds. I have some slides to share with you. I don't know how I can project these slides. Can you help me in moving my slides on? OK, these are the topics I'm going to deal with. And then let's take a quick look at them all. Let's get started. So I, I do represent the National Desk Europa Creativa. I'm the point of contact the person to contact for this program, Europa Creativa, Creative Europe. Our desk is split in two different backgrounds, uh, culture and media. Culture and media. Culture is dealing with all the cultural topics. Media is just dealing with audiovisuals. So cinema, documentary films, and video games, video gaming. Culture is tackling all the other points. We work in partnership for culture, the Ministry of Culture, the General Directorate for Contemporary Arts, for audiovisuals the partnership with Cine Città. Film studios, cinema studios. This is renewed every seven years. There is a real stringent regulation. And in these seven years uh, uh, period, we have been very successful. We had one point something billion euro. Now we went up to uh, 2.44 billion euros. So refunding has been needed, but this means that the critical times where we had to reallocate the budgetary lines, running the risk to be given the same funds as the previous years, we record an increase by 60%. So the European and the Parliament understood how important it was to support this program. The program financing enterprises, cultural and creative enterprises. I already said this. We have many programs for culture, but that's the a program for enterprises. So I said the way this is uh, uh, shifted media, audiovisuals, culture for the possible backgrounds, open up to an important. Uh, Part, figures in Europe, almost 45% of projects chosen are just projects for performing uh, arts, shows, entertainment. In Italy, we went up to 50%. 50% of Italian approved projects are projects relevant to the entertainment, re re relevant to the show industry. So we have some 
very good applicants uh, writing fantastic projects because we have uh, a good performance as well to report and many of these in theater after me my my colleague Marcia will be talking to you sharing two different uh, 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 storytelling audience development reaching out uh, to reaching out people in European by house, but also it's important to listen to concrete experiences so we can understand this is going to take part. This is, it's possible to take part, to participate. Also, questioning ourselves. Losing is also important, useful, because if you lose, understand what you did wrong and you create the mistake you've done. So, uh, so experimentation originates from projects. What we do is helping people free, free of charge. We help people from the technical viewpoint. So we, we help people submitting the, 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 the project, uh, taking uh, information from the instruction provided for the uh, call uh, uh, for offers. These are the details. Uh, support in the creation of European works, promoting competitiveness and innovation in the field of audiovisuals, but also for, for, fin for funding also cultural and creative enterprises, other budgetary lines, and promoting in innovation. Innovation is not just technological innovation. Anytime we speak of innovation, we speak of the use of new technologies. It's not true. It's not enough. Innovation is in the heads of the people. When you realize there is something that no one else has been stressed, has been shown so far, whereas you can show and stress this now. You can focus on this, you can solve, you can transform something. Just to, to, to take an example, a few years ago we understood that the artist, the performer, a musician, for making career, so he or she needs uh, not just uh, artistic skills, but also uh, management skills are required. There's two for musicians. They also have to be managers of themselves. Now it's, it's taken for granted, but some times ago, this was a real innovation. So this was very innovative, this new trend, this new conception of the musician role and career. That's what we do using this program. We repeat this theme, but financial support is extremely required. It's very needed. When you take part in the Europa Creativa program, the first input is being funded, receiving the money. That's meaningful. In cooperation projects, you can get some uh, co uh, financing up to 80% for small range projects. In large scale projects, up to 60%. That's a meaningful co funding. But the first impact is the economic one. But still, we have some additional points I want to share with you. You already said this during this meeting. So the value of the partnership with other European uh, realities and beyond Europe. So in addition to the European one, that's a, 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 a great value. We say inter internationalization is not true. It's not all. When we work with other colleagues of other, co of other countries, we learn more. We learn, we do see new things, and we start a new cycle. You tell your story, the others tell you their own stories, and you, you, you start a new way, making you progress, making you improve, upgrading your work. That's what uh, happened to us, people working in the desk office. We, we are in a network of 40 national uh, desks. Pandemic to us has been an added value. So we had to meet one another more. And so we met one another online. So before this, we met three or four years, uh, uh, three or four times a year in Brussels. Now we met one another even more. Uh, through the, uh, I mean, the, 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 the ICT platforms. We meet one another at least three times a month. 
I say we are now networking more than we did before when I, I talk to a Portuguese colleague or to other colleagues uh, elsewhere. When I talk to the Portuguese colleagues, to the French colleagues or whatever these might be, or the German colleagues, and when we speak or, the, or to the Maltese or Greek colleagues and we speak the same language altogether. We have no difference. When we speak of culture, we do speak exactly the same language. We do speak the same way, all of us, and we're just hearing the same things. But we have a different method. That time, I'm going to acquire additional capability skills. I know something more, and I get something more to give the others. There's the intrinsic value of partnership. There's a budget, this year budget, which is much, much higher, very meaningful, these budgetary lines. I'm proceeding quickly as to the budget, and I would like to say this. In any project of Europa Creativa and not within other program frameworks, we have to take stock of the sectoral themes. When you, when, when you do a project, the first question asked to you is, how much can you project to 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 gender equality, social inclusion, and and a removal of diversities, and the fight for uh, uh, climatic change. Your project is not a Green Deal project or a project for social inclusion. This means when you do your project, you bear this in mind. Your project uh, is just uh, uh, giving rise to a situation which is something advantageous to, to these themes. When we say gender equality, I do not mean that you have to make the right calculation between males and females. If you do something well, that space of yours is open to any kind, to any, uh, to any, to any, to any type of, and uh, this can grow up. If you take stock of the needs, for the Green Deal, this means that you're going to reduce the management meetings and then you're going to be more focused on meetings in presence because you have to start the show and the interaction with the audience is key or maybe you will be uh, focused on the idea that when you're going to meet the organizers of the meeting, still you have some guidelines uh, to follow. Regional administration made some uh, progress on these. Uh, we have uh, guidelines to uh, to organize a green shooting or a green event. This might be, I don't know, a new professional figure. I mean, the green manager for organizing green events or something we, we, we didn't think of yet. So I can proceed go, going ahead. For many themes, these are the huge novelties this year. So the first novelty is among the action of Europa Creativa. Also, we have also this brand, Europe for the Heritage, Europa per il Patrimonio, finding out a place meaningful to, the, to European history. Ventateni for us, Spinelli has been has been has been put in prison. Espinelli is one of our uh, founders, our father, for those being Europe lovers. The other point is, is uh, music moves Europe. Kanye, Pranya spoke of this already, Pranya. So, so music moves Europe. That strategy, analytical approach, as Pranya said, that's specific for music, that's a sector which is very much uh, followed by all. And for capacity building of new capacities for, for professionalism, for the digital use of devices, and also in connection with something else. And then one call for offers we will receive additional information about this. Perform Europe, performing arts. This should be, I mean, available in June, approximately. We, we don't know how this will be uh, originated, but I suggest you to see this project, Perform Europe. This has been financed by the European 
uh, Commission, go and look at Perform Europe to get more information about this project. I've got many other things to share now, but I would rather stop here. If you want, slides will be put to you, will be made available to you. I pass the floor to Marzia Santoni of the uh, 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 of the cultural department, and she's going to speak about the cooperation projects with a lot of participants. Thus paving the way to the two experiences, we're going to to leave pizza and go in Florence. Uh, the project for the uh, Western Balkans, the only Italian project who won that one. I'm very happy to have with us Viola Gab and Roberto Ferbetti with a wonderful uh, relationship with our office the theater for the youth. And I'm very happy to have them with us today because our network uh, uh, won. That's a lovely Italian story, Italian and European story to tell about. Thank you all. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Now the floor to Marcia Santone. Good morning. Thank you for having me. As we are a bit late, I will not uh, show my slide. I will try in 10 minutes to talk about the cooperation projects and why they are so important. My speech will be a creative one based on uh, uh, what has been said so far this morning. There are two important words that I heard this morning, uh, curiosity and spirituality. The creative Europe was able to re revive the spiritual soul of Europe. We often hear about European community of defense, and that makes me think back to my dissertation thesis and to the saying that the European Community of Defense would rearm Germany and disarm France. And that was one of the reasons we never had a spiritual Europe. But now we are in a difficult moment. As for uh, uh, the creative Europe, everybody thinks that in order to have a project, you only need to know about European design. No, you need to have a spiritual soul. You need to join together technique and knowledge. The cooperation projects are a great chance for cultural operators because they allow to connect ideas and artists from all over Europe. So these projects go beyond the national borders. So the idea of partnership is fundamental. It is the key uh, concept of European cooperation, cultural cooperation. When uh, we do cooperation projects, the most important thing is to go beyond the national borders. But how can we create a cooperation project? Uh, you shouldn't do it for economic reasons. You need to have a structure in place, at least three European partners, a project leader and at least two partners from three different countries participating in the program. So you can have a small scale project, a medium scale project with more partners, and you can have a large scale project. Now, the most important thing is to respect priorities, priorities that are defined by the European Union in the call, in the text of the call. There are five priorities, and uh, they interpret the specific goals Anna Ponticello mentioned before. So if you want to create a cooperation project, 
and Roberto will talk about this, we need to decide whether we go towards a transnational mobility or innovation. In terms of priorities, guidelines tell us that we can choose two between among the five that we've mentioned. I will list them now briefly because uh, they are a priority at first. So the first one is audience development, which is uh, the dominant concept. From my, my point of view, it represents the right to culture, the right to beauty. Audience development and engagement is a process. You have to break all barriers and bridge all distances between the audience and culture. So strategies to include uh, the uh, audience in the process of cultural participation. So uh, we have we need to have young people become decision makers. The second priority is the new European Bauhaus. As we've heard before by Mr. Shakitano, this was a revolution in cooperation projects because it allows us to rethink the idea of sustainable development from a cultural perspective. As for the new European Bauhaus, it's important to say that it is true that it is a, U a European movement, but also from an Italian point of view, the mm, limits of resources, so the problem of fossil fuels and so on, was first mentioned in Italy. In 1972, Club di Roma published a text on the limitations of development. This club was created in 1968, and it was a club made of scientists, but also philosophers, anthropologists, uh, sociologists. It was an important moment, a fundamental moment, where a moment in which we said resources are, are finite. And there was a, a mathematical model to calculate this. It was later, uh, the MIT was uh, commissioned to do this. Reagan uh, thought the, this was very pessimistic uh, because at that time we thought resources were infinite, but they're not. We know how things uh, went. Uh, we know what Amartya Sen said, that resources are not sustainable, so we cannot go beyond our GDP. And then we go back to Europe in a moment in which the Millennium uh, Development Goals talk about sustainability and talk about culture as a transitorial tool for development. And in these Development Goals, culture is only considered as entertainment. This is just uh, to, to express something, the second priority is a, a key point. Just think that if we could go to a concert and uh, pedal on a bike to produce energy, this is part of the Green Deal, a cultural kind of humanism, as Jeremy Rifkin said in, its, in his last book, The New European Green Deal, that you should all read. So priorities, audience, de development, audience development, new European Bauhaus, and then social inclusion. So culture as a social fact, a relational act and a collaborative practice. I'm mentioning a book, uh, The Culture in Transformation, where it explains very well the concept of culture as an institution, as um, a creation of uh, sharing spaces. And then fourth, the digital world, the use of digital technologies to promote and distribute cultural content. And then five, the international dimension. Now, I've been very brief, very rapid in mentioning them. But when you decide you want to create a cooperation project, you have to think about these five priorities. I'm about to conclude. What's new? Um, 
with the change, the, the shift between the old and the new planning and design, a new structure has been added. Now I can decide whether to work in all cultural and recreational sectors, so a transdisciplinary project, or a project in a specific sector, theater, music, or. But for me, the real revolution in the guidelines is the fact that for the first time, cooperation projects allow the development of projects in certain cultural and uh, creative projects that the Commission indicates every year that are considered the most important ones, music, architecture, design, cultural heritage, and fashion. So this is very important because in this way you can develop a project on a very specific area. On a, another priority that is called capacity building that deals with uh, the topic of competence and cultural contents. Now, to conclude, I talked about priorities. And as I told you before, in terms of readability, and uh, all operators can participate, public ones, the private ones. They have to be legally registered in Italy. Uh, the leader has to be at least two in terms of years of existence. And as for dates, uh, this year's call uh, finished yesterday, expired yesterday, but this is an opportunity that the European Commission gives every year. So this call is published after the publication of the World Programme by the European Commission. So it's a call you can take part in or apply for every year, because it takes time to write a uh, um, cooperation project. It takes months, sometimes a whole year, because it's a co-planning, a co-design process. So I think that is all for me. Now I would like to give the floor to protagonists of uh, Creative Europe. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Now the floor to Roberto Frabetti. Unfortunately, we don't have much time, so I apologize for this. OK, I will try not to go too much into detail on the design of a Croatian project because it would take too long. So I just would like to give you some food for thought, as uh, the previous speakers have done. And maybe I will talk about some details. So the title of my speech was uh, Infancy and Performa Performative Arts. I've worked for 20 years in European projects. It started in 2005 and will finish in 2025. In this way, I have acquired a lot of knowledge and food for thought. And um, I like the fact that this was all on performative arts for um, children, children from zero to six years of age, children that go to kindergartens, uh, uh, crash. They are a wonderful audience. And these are all projects uh, that want to stress, once again, that children have the right to a total cultural citizenship. They have the right to meet all arts. I come from the theater world. But children need to have the right to be considered full citizens. At the basis of all this project, there is an idea, a concept, and that is children are not future audience. They are present, part of the present audience, so they have the right to see good arts today, not just in the future. So I think it's important that we give them the opportunity of meeting theater, dance, all performative arts, um, 
even children that are below one in age. So I want to show the other images. OK, I found. Look at that. These are our audience. This is our audience. And look at those stairs. Look at how these children look. Uh, they are less than two. This is really, wow, a great emotion. They are looking at, they're watching the performance of a Norwegian uh, company. Look, they are hugging each other. They feel it so intensely. And look at that. Uh, look at the age of these people. Here you see someone who's a bit older, uh, kindergarten. The age changes, but the quality of the experience doesn't change. Again, children from the kindergarten. This is the end of the performance, a relationship between uh, a young girl from Bologna and a Danish artist through that object, which is a house built on a world, you see the exchange of experience of two people that are separated from 50 years of uh, difference. And so this uh, project that is called mapping, it's an 1823 project for large cooperation. It started in November 2018. It will be concluded in November 2023. We had a one-year extension because of COVID. It was a large cooperation project. It involved many different partners. Right now, we're talking about 18 partners from 17 countries. And this is the way we create bridges, networks, exchanges. This creates large moments, large events, large squares, where we give and create opportunities, not just for those who participate in the project, but also for the rest of people who go through those squares, who meet that project. Now, I'll uh, skip the details. If we, we want to focus on the ability of children, teenagers, to be in the performative situation with all their senses, and this is, this is mapping. We're not, we don't want to create a map. We don't want to write a charter. We want to create questions that will lead to other questions, because we think the culture needs to uh, foster the creation of new questions. Uh, I would like to talk about not a single project. I would like to talk about the fact that we can create a system like uh, the system of the theater for very young children uh, through uh, a project. The project was called Small Size, and it was a project to create a network for the dissemination of performative arts in uh, for early childhood. Uh, when it finished uh, in 2005, we started, we applied again uh, with the Small Size The Net project involving seven partners from seven European countries. Then when it ended in 2009, we had the culture um, program. We had five-year projects. We applied for another project, 2009 to 2014, which is our identity card in a way that is called Small Size Big Citizens. Again, targeted for this uh, um, age um, audience. And uh, you should bear in mind that those who started the project then continued, continued to work. And then uh, we went beyond this. 
uh, we thought we would not be able to continue after the third project, but we applied for another four-year project, small size performing arts for early years project. And now uh, all of this led to the creation of a, a network, a network for small size, out of the four partners who started uh, the project, the small size network has more than 80 companies participating in it from all over the world, more than 30 countries from the five continents. So the European project led to the creation of a system to give dignity to the theater and performative arts for early childhood. And this led to festivals being created, uh, events, uh, and artists from all over the world benefited from it. The small size network now has more than 80 companies. There are great opportunities that we can benefit from because Europe is investing in this to, uh, for, for these resources to be at the disposal of those who are younger, uh, children, adolescents, young people, to give them more opportunities. These projects continued. That is why I talk about 20 years. We applied for the call in 2021 with two projects, one for large corporation and another one is on networks, uh, the one Anna was talking about. The cooperation project uh, starts uh, next week in Sweden. And part of the partnership uh, has changed. It's not for early childhood. It's for childhood and adolescence together. The reference point is an international association called ACT. Many of you may, may know it. It's a world association of theater for childhood and um, uh, young people. It has uh, nine European festivals as partners for all ages of childhood and adolescence. CITES participates uh, together with other subjects who will organize international events. In the four year, there will be 16 festivals in many European cities, 10 countries, because large cooperation projects uh, require at least 10 countries four international events, the first in Sweden, then in Serbia, then Cuba, then France, and then six events, international events, in the different continents, so that this uh, vision, this idea of listening to the audience, it is the title of the project is The Art of Listening in Theatre for Young Audiences. So the ability of the artist, of the performer, of the actress or actor to listen to the audience because either you can feel the audience, have an exchange with the audience, otherwise it will be extremely frustrating. This kind of audience can give you a lot. Uh, you can learn a lot from them. So uh, this project has 14 partners for, from 11 countries. Let's see how it goes. At the same time, because we basically wrote them together uh, with as ACITES International, I participated as one of the creators of the project for the first time as ACITES International is located in Bologna and participated uh, with a small size network uh, as affiliated entity. And that network is based in uh, Bologna ag again. This is a three-year project, but for the first time, an Italian network is among the networks. So it's a good thing. Uh, I like to think this is no nationalism. It's just a way to see that new opportunities uh, uh, emerge. ACTAG International has uh, national centers as members, as well as networks from 80 countries in the world. So it's another great opportunity, a new opening, new bridges, let's say, new networks. And I think this is a great opportunity that cooperation projects in Europe offer us. Thank you. Thank you very much for this lovely experience. 
We finish this up with viola. Viola gaba. Try to be synthetic if you can, for reasons of time. Just meeting the schedule this morning. Good morning, anyone. I'm Viola Gaba. I feel a bit shy because after the colleague's presentation, we do represent a small Florence reality we've been established 10 years ago with the support of the uh, political sciences uh, department. A group of students uh, from the politics of international relations uh, with a different background. I'm a second generation. Uh, I, I grew up in Albania and then in Italy. We all have different, I mean, uh, multicultural backgrounds. So with cooperation, we're trying to go ahead with this hybrid identity and a new approach to international cooperation to see what we can do, which kind of changes are going to be possible in this strategy. So to make a long story short, as we're not meeting the uh, schedule, I want to screen a video clip for our project, like um, we have technical problems for launching the video clip. So now we have a video clip. I don't know. There's no. Welcome to the Balkans. Prison to your body, prison to your mind. Fire! Fashion. Love. Hate. Resourceful. Mystic. The Balkania is a new idea. Piano. Sentence mio. Barbaro Kenie de Civilizator Tolazi. There is so much left to be unearthed. Balkan Regia Quadilian Relicum. Balkan Regia Quadilian Relicum. The territory understands itself through the stomach, a soggy bread with fresh onions and smoky pieces of meat, a rough and honest encounter. Chavapi. Sjebana odvojena teritorija u kojoj se podjelama između sebe dodatno otuđujemo, stvarajući na taj način dodatni rastjev. Sjebana odvojena teritorija u kojoj se podjela... Eko mi. Dunque, il nostro proje... I am back. Our project names... Balkans. So the objective is to deconstruct these stereotypes and prejudice to Balkans. In the call for offers also we took this critical approach as to the definition of the Western Balkans, what they can mean inside our strong partnership. That's a cooperation project, international, including eight partners, the Western Balkans. Our organization and co-applicants also, we have one German partner, one Greek partner, whereas in the Balkans we have Serbia, in Northern Macedonia, Kosovo, and Bosnia. I just came back from Bosnia yesterday for some activities, and I wanted to share this experience because our 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 friends have to travel uh, in the Balkans so for a sort of art residence program 
and my witness has been very, very complex. We got a lot of difficulties to get the documents to obtain the visa for traveling in the Balkans. Most meaningful, our, our artists had a lot of difficulties to, to travel. This took one month and half of energy and resources just yesterday, so we received good news so our friends can travel there. So, and to us, it was a sort of liberation to go up to the summit, to the top of the mark. They, they were the first uh, Kosovo uh, guys entering in this, this area. When we speak of international cooperation, so tangible results are very, very welcome. This call for offers as the, the objective, I mean, to foster intercultural dialogue as a strong tool to improve relations in the Balkans and between the Balkans and, and the EU. But on the other hand, it also has another objective, and we we'll try to focus on this and to foster the mobility of artists and cultural workers because they just uh, have to go beyond barriers, being very high. So, and to make a short, uh, a long story short, to make a synthesis of this project. So the, pa the, the, the core is a group of boys and girls, a young man and young women, eight artists that have been selected traveling in the Balkans. So the wheel uh, leave from Banja Luka, going to Serbia, to Kosovo, to Albania, and they will be going to northern Macedonia to go to the uh, Beano of the Western Balkans. During their uh, trip, what they will be doing, they will be performing in in the local areas of partners, there will be there will be days of some activities in Tirana where artists will be performing. We have this interdisciplinary group of artists working nowadays in an art residence in Banja Luka. With this format, is really said that's a special format, which consists in involving individuals to question themselves about stereotypes. Which are these stereotypes? Which are the Balkans? Who can define what Balkans are? And then we go straight to this point, to the final conclusion to draw. We are in a bad need to redefine the Balkans as we belong to the Balkans, a sort of self-thought, self-reflection pushing us back to the Balkans. What are not the Balkans, first and foremost, then open up to new dimensions. All these people, young people of the project, performers, uh, so any type of, they are fed with the war. They don't want to, to, to speak of war any longer. And any time the discussion seems to, to come to the ethnic conflict or war, they want to open up the new perspectives, stop talking about war. That's one of the main achievements of our research, because in the meantime, we also carried out a research, one artistic research, what the Balkans are and how, and how and, and why do we speak of the Balkans? As I said, we have the big need of reimagining the Balkans, the Balkans, redefine the Balkans uh, to understand what the Balkans are not. That's a monolithic entity as it is perceived. We all know the sad stories on the Balkans, but they need to go beyond to construct something, to build up something, aware of our past, but to to launch new bridges. Now I'm showing some images of our, of our, of our trip during this project. All these young people came to Florence also 
to introduce, to share the results of their research and to obtain the, the uh, visa has been so long to invite 13 people from the Balkans. So this took a lot of time, never ending story to get the visas of these 14 people from the Balkans imaginable. Now we have some, some frames of their research activity for uh, places of the Balkans very interesting, not being, not, not being fully known. The target was uh, finding new themes, but not really new themes, but to reconsider these themes with new eyes. We have these very interesting research. Uh, so trash form, coalition, so problems of Bosnia for pollution. So the not far reaching policy containing uh, pollution and nationalism. That's a real research activity with a very important uh, as artistic production, which is going to be shown at the end of the project. And an interesting, very interesting research is the one on a place, a location at the border between Montenegro and Albania. This small community, Kelmending, just a few people living in this village. A study has been done on topography, how these signs used by the shepherds to communicate amongst themselves are real tools, communication tools. No one else knows. You can decipher if you live in this community, and these artists of ours live five days in these mountains, just a few people with, with her. And she, she has been shooting, I mean, filming the shepherds, uh, sounds, a very interesting installation that has been also shown. The project also includes a residence, capacity building residence. That's, uh, that's a mutual learning program, as we name it, to avoid the top-down approach of cooperation. This was a program, one, one, one horizontal uh, project in birding, dealing with town plan planning. That's a big, big reality, beautiful reality. What happened? So people from Berlin, they learned a lot from the Balkans because the the few resources of the Balkans. So in spite of all these, we have a new creative way of using those resources and to achieve the objectives. Our partners learned a lot in the Balkans. The study visits have been conducted. We work with other projects and cultural spaces. But this was very interesting. I mean, this, how can I say, so this, uh, this, uh, this uh, hilarious side of our lives. Many of our colleagues in Berlin have been very much impressed, astonished for what our partners were, were capable, capable of doing in spite of the lack of resources, troubles, lack of mobility, but also, also having difficulties with the local powers. So, this is a funny uh, story. With my colleague, I had to go to Bos and to the Office of International Relations in Banja Luka because we, we, we need a visa. And then all the documents are being released when the visa has been released. Also, this is very interesting cooperation. We second generations uh, were one foot inside or one foot outside. I was not surprised uh, to go there to be a bit bully, to get the visa and to get all the other documents released, issued. And this was not surprising to me for receiving these young people from Kosovo. These are additional pictures taken. These are additional images taken. These are the artists selected coming from the Balkans. By uh, the second being uh, Alessandro, Italian, belonging to this fantastic group 
of travelers. They will, they will, they will, they will, they will be crossing the Balkans, traveling in, in, in the Balkans in September with some format or performance to be attractive to places, villages, Banja Luka, uh, Pristina, and other places and cities. I'm done. Thank you so much. Our project will come to its end at the uh, 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 the annual festival, and then the final show in Pristina. Uh, Pristina is the final, uh, the final time moment for many reasons, among which taking this international group to Pristina and setting up a new network that will be sustainable in the future. Thanks a million. Thank you, Viola. Well, so following the lineup of this meeting, informal, thank you for this experience, for this storytelling, and also thank you all. I want to take this little time left to say hello to our friends of Teatro 2. I want to say hello to Daniele Russo as well, who joined us, Orlando Furioso. We will meet the locals. I do not draw any conclusions because many, 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 many topics have been discussed. Very, very challenging. I prefer to give you a final report. So we've been very much followed. A lot of people following the session online. So that's a good, a good conclusion. I would like to to write down a report in order to welcome your queries, your questions. And this might also be an occasion to start a new journey and to think of our next meeting. As we said with Emmanuel de Merci Mota, and I thank him once again. So that's a, a starting point. It's not a final destination. That's a starting point. That's a new, uh, a new step to another step to to, to pick up this new idea of a new alliance of the European theatres. You have seen that all these topics dealt with in the Charter 1821 been our map, our major lighthouse. All these topics have been discussed even, even furthermore in all examples provided. I invite you this afternoon at the Museo Novecento live consultation at 6.30 p.m., and you will be given the chance of finding other bits of this storytelling of this magnificent charter, 1821, that has to take stock of what we said today. So that's, uh, that's uh, a general uh, foundation on which we can keep working all together. Thank you all from my heart. Special thanks to the present institutions, and let's keep going this way. That's it. Bye-bye.